So many of you have been asking how I made this animation, but well, nobody actually asked. Anyway, let's see how I did it. There is always a start point to everything which defines it. Same way we have to make a start point for our product as well. That, and that thing is the frame of our keyboard, which is quite unique and premium in look. And we will use it to set a theme of gray and black. I love black. To start with, let's add a camera to the scene and a background plane in this way. Also, we'll add a rock, but why the rock? With our frame on top of it, because essentially this frame might have been made from a rock. Maybe. Also, I will go to the camera settings and change the focal length to about 90 mm. That way, the products look more amazing. Also, I will divide these panels from here. My mind says, let's have the frame come down from top and have some cool zoom in shots. So let's first keyframe the position of our frame so it would come from top and down onto our rock and make it really slow, not that fast. Just coming down looks bland. Nobody would hire you if you make this. So let's have a little rotation on the z-axis as it's getting down and get this. To make it even more smooth, what I will do is go to the graph editor, enable the Z location, zoom in. We are going to stretch this one. So when it comes down, it becomes really slow. Now I will wait for about 20 to 30 frames and then zoom into the edge of our frame to show its premium quality. But, but, but how to have that as a proper animation? So first of all, I will add an empty which will be our focus point. Then apply a constraint on our camera, which will be a track tool and select the empty in that. I will rename the empty as focus point. Now, wherever I will move this empty, the camera will always look at it. Our first zoom in will be at the 90th frame, where I will keyframe my focus point and the camera because camera will be zooming in and the focus point will be switching to its edge of the frame. Now, one thing you should know is that in Blender 4.1, you just have to press I to insert a keyframe and it automatically applies keyframe on all the channels. Now I will wait for around 30 frames. Then we can again keyframe our camera and the focus point and switch to the corner. Just like this. The camera angle matters a lot in every particular shot. So I make sure to have a kind of a low angle shot when zoomed in. Finally, we stay for around 40 to 50 frames and have a camera transition out. You can even pan out into the darkness or you can just have a rotation camera around the corner of the frame. We can focus on this later. Right now, if we play the animation, it looks not worthy. So to make it better, to make it look like something is happening, we will let the frame rotate throughout the animation. So I will keyframe it at the last frame. Now if we play, you will see it got some life into it. As it's rotating, it gives some dynamism, if that's a word. Second thing, the shift to edge and then to the corner is like a repeated process and I don't like repetition, I like new things. I will show a neat and cool trick. I will bring the transition frame together like this for the empty and camera also. So it looks like instant switching. Now here is the magic, go 5 frames before it keyframe on our camera then go 4 to 5 frames after those frames and move in our camera and keyframe it again. After you are done with it, delete the keyframes in between for only the camera and hit that spacebar. Now fast fast so go subscribe to my channel. Final effect which I have created using Geo Notes, which is quite simple. First we'll select the edges where we want the effect to happen then go to the vertex group and assign our solution to a new group and let's switch to geometry node editor first thing we want these edges to split so use a split edge node after that we want the splitted edges to dance so we will use a set position and connect wave texture to it which will be connected to a uv map it can be added using a named attribute and set it to uv First problem is we don't want all of them to move. So using named attribute again and you will get an option to select the vertex group you created earlier. Then connect it to the set position selection. Second issue is we only want it on a particular axis. So we will use the combine XYZ 
and use only the Z to get this. No, it's way too much. So we have to reduce it using the scale vector math node and reduce the scale finally to make it move. Correct value node face offset of the wave texture and type hashtag frame divided by two to get this. Change the value accordingly to get the desired result. Then to animate in and out the effect, you can use the scale and change its value from 0 to 0 0.01 that whatever works for you and finally we will do the lighting let's set wall strength to 0 because i want full control over my lights first i will add a light from top i will apply a constraint which is the track to and select our rock we want mostly focus on our frame not on the rock just consider the rock as a side character to have that sharp look on our lights, I will change the spread to 30 degree so they are more sharper. Next, when our frame is coming down, I will have a light leak from left. That light will at last only affect the frame. So we will keyframe the rotation to get this kind of a result. And finally, when the frame is about to touch, I will add another light which will affect both the background and the frame at the end position. We'll position it something like this and only play with the power and keyframe it to turn it off and on. And at the last, we get this beautiful frame reveal result. I'll apply a material on our background and make it kind of a gray. So our metal shines. Now we come to the scene 2. What I want is our frame to come in very fast, slow down, keyboard will build up and then exit very fast. First of all, we will add an empty cube and then parent every part of the keyboard to that empty so it becomes a main controller. Now to easily animate in and out, we will add a curve path like this one and set it up this way. And finally apply a follow path constraint on our controller and we get the offset value which we can keyframe to have it in fast, slow down and then go out fast like this. Now for the build up part of our board, I used the Geo Notes again. Also you can grab the blend file for all the animation from my Comrade page. Link is in the description. First of all to control our effect, we will add an empty to our scene. Now go to the Geo Node and create a new one. First make sure you have this kind of topology on your mesh. Then we want to split these using split edges. Now we can affect them individually using skin elements set to face. We want to scale them in a proper gradient. To make that happen, we will need a distance between the empty and the faces, which we will get by subtracting them using vector math node. Now we will tell Geo node in which direction we want the effect to be. Using a dot product, changing the x value so we can have scaling on the x direction. With map range, we can shift it all to the right side. Now using the same value we can move them up using the set position node but we only want them to be moving up on the Z so using a combined XYZ and again using a map range to limit the effect. One final thing that you would love to do is go to the modifier section and add a solidify modifier so you get this final depth in the board. With this setup complete we'll keep the empty at the start in the center and then when the frame is about to slow down quite a lot we will move this empty out fast so we get this kind of amazing result. Next just after this result I want to rotate it 180 degree and while it's rotating I will rotate and scale in the remaining part of our keyboard. Also one thing you might be wondering how am I able to rotate it from that origin how did I shift the origin there. So it's just pretty simple selecting the object you get to the options and here in the origins if you select the origin check it you can just move the origin by pressing the G key like that. Now it's time to do the lighting so I will set a key light in the same direction as the keyboard is going out towards and add some more lights on top and down with less power so that it can fill in the corners of the keyboard where its parts are not visible or reflective enough. Now we move towards the scene 3. It's just a normal scene with a camera parented to a MT. So what's happening here is just a simple fast 180 degree rotation then slowing down then again 180 degree fast rotation. Lighting is also similar to previous techniques. Now we come to the scene 4. This scene is focusing on the build quality of the keys and also their features. First we are going to make the exploding animation of a single key and a switch. We will 
get all the switch parts like this add a curve which will be a circle now select any part and apply a constraint which is a copy location and select our circle and set it to local space and check the offset now if you move the circle the top part will move with it so if you want one to go in the opposite direction what we'll do is again select it and check the invert on the z-axis so that should work let's apply it to all and let's see the result And finally, we get this. Now we want to move our switch as well, but that is not possible with all this setup. Add an empty cube to our scene and then selecting each part of switch, apply another copy location that will override every previous constraint. So we will just let it be at well speed and also check the offset button and select our empty cube and do this for every part. And after we are done, then we will have to also parent our circle to the empty cube. So it always follows with it we will be able to move it up and also explore the key as well so in this scene what's gonna happen is we will be viewing our key from the top it will be all black after a few frame our key will light up just like that after a few frame our whole scene will light up and then our key will start to rise up you can see there's a gradient so i've used a cylinder as you can see if i go into edit mode it's a cylinder with the edges bevel like that now for the exploding part animation, it's really easy to do. After that, we again have the magic of Geo nodes to bring all the key down in this fancy way using that plane or any object, select it and then create a new geometry nodes. All our switches bring it in here by dragging it like that. We have all the switches here and then we use the keycaps as well. Also make sure to separate the children's so we can move their position individually. Now what we want to do is join them together. First of all, we'll use a joint geometry. We want to offset and create an animation. So we'll use set position in offset to make the offset, I will use a node called gradient texture. So right now we are getting this weird result. Make sure it is going only on the Z direction. So we'll use a combine XYZ and join it like that. Switch it to Z only. So it's moving only on the Z. Tell Blender, hey, only make it move on a particular range. So we'll use a map range and define that range. So as you can see, it's working. Then to animate it, it's really simple. After the combined XYZ, use a math node. Now, if we change the add value, you can see this kind of animation. You can vary it even more and less by changing the max and min value. When our single key has almost settled down, we have to run that animation just after it like this one. Now is the perfect time to introduce an accessory, which is the rest pad of our keyboard. So first of all, we have a basic slow sliding in of our rest pad. To make it more appealing, what I would do is first add an empty and keep it here. Then select the camera and enable depth of field and select the empty. Depth of field is there, but we are not getting the most out of it. To make that happen, I've applied this kind of texture on our rest pad. In the Warner texture, you will get the exponent if you try changing it. So if you use this with the depth of field, it will look even more better. As if the rest pad material is forming up. The next scene, there's not much going on here in this scene. It's just a simple scene. It's just showing the magnetic feature of our rest pad. One thing you can notice is this change the solid view. You can see I have created a gate type of thing and through which our light is peeking through. And then if you look through our camera and set up a depth of field, you get this kind of look. For the next scene, we are going to focus, which is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth switch. Now, for the animation part, first of all, we'll take a curved circle and then parent our camera to it. Also, make sure to move the center of our circle towards here. So that will be the pivot point. We'll keep him in such a way so that the camera goes in fast, slows down really, and then goes out fast in a circular motion. And when it slows down, the switch moves from left to right. So we have parented our focus point to the switch. So wherever the switch moves, our focus point will follow it. So how did I achieve this individual lighting up? All the trick of the shader. So selecting this part, I will assign it a different shader. Let's switch to the render view. First, we will take the images of our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Then we will combine these two images using a mix node and set their proper position using a texture coordinate and a mapping node then connect it to the mix shader factor which will act like a mask 
To give them color, we will use a emission shader and then attach a color ramp to our emission. You might have to add an invert node in between the mix and the mix shader so we can only affect symbol with the emission shader. You, after we adjust it, we will get two different colors. Then we have a problem here. Background is all black. Actually, what we want is to use the same shader which is on our main keyboard body. So Select like the previous shader and just copy this principle BSDF, bring it into the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi one and connect it to the second socket of the mix shader. And we are done. Boom. The symbols are not disappearing with the switch changing its side. For that, we will use a mix shader. This way, we can create another mask using just the factor here. So first of all, we use the texture coordinate. We want to select the switch in it which as an object so it will give us the location. Then we will connect the object from it to the mapping. We only need the movement on the X location. So we'll use a separate XYZ and then connect the X value to a color ramp. After we visualize it, it looks kind of like this. Use the mapping to adjust the scale and the position of the mask. After tweaking the color ramp a bit, you might have to add the invert color to switch the result. And finally, we get this. The next scene is also quite simple. For making everything convenient for us, I have duplicated the blend file. So this has the same camera animation as before, but only difference is the focus point slowly switching from type C to the USB. Second so camera, I have also enabled the depth of field. So it looks very soothing when it's switching from, from the USB and then switches to type C. You might have noticed in the background of my maximum scene, there's a grayish gradient, which is to set a particular theme throughout. And I'm guessing by now you might have already subscribed to my channel. This scene is going to focus on two variants. So the first shot is of the transparent edition where camera is hovering over it so it's just a simple panning shot the second shot is also with a similar animation but with a different camera and a white edition of the keyboard i've duplicated my keyboard and shifted it to here and add another camera to render another shot for the third shot consists of the third camera showing both facing each other and both moving in the opposite direction and also i have created a fake depth here using just two planes Fourth and the last shot where both are rotating and taking their turns with a slow motion and a plane on left and right to create some fake depth again same as before camera is also tilted a little to make the keyboards look a little tilted I'm sure you can all create these four shots easily but the question is why I used four cameras because what we can do is add a marker or the timeline and select the particular camera so just press ctrl b and it will bind it bind all the cameras to particular markers wherever that marker is the view will switch to that particular camera so for example the camera which had the white keyboard in it it will switch to that camera and before that we had a camera on the transparent one so it will switch it back it's just like seamlessly switching without keyframing anything this is just how you can get more understanding at using the software. Please do make sure to subscribe so that you won't miss out the future videos from me. And also grab the blend file from my Gumroad page and check out my other projects as well. So I will see you in the next one. And if you have any ideas, something unique ideas and new, not something boring, you can definitely ping me and I will try that out. So see you in the next one. Ta-da, bye.